once again, thank you very, very much, Lion Lad, for the tier two for nine months, and then for five tier two gifted subs. That's humongous. Thank you so very, very much. That is crazy generous. I appreciate it greatly. You're a good dude. You're a good bud. Thank you very much. If you got a tier two gifted sub, welcome to the Bahamuts. If you didn't, get dodged. Uh, we are here in map number one, our third best of three of the day. I feel like after this, after this, after this beer, I'm gonna get some tea. No, after I, after I finish this tea, I think it's time for a beer or two because you know what? It's a fun Sunday. We're having a good time. I've hydrated enough, and I'm also gonna go to bed at like five o'clock because my sleep schedule is eradicated because of getting up up so early for these uh, for these tournaments. But either way, it's already like noon for me technically because my day's already half over. <laughs> But thank you everyone for hanging out. Welcome in. We're here on Battlefield of Eternity, map number one. We got some housekeeping to do before we get into this draft. So while the bands and stuff go on, let's talk about the uh, the draft and everything. Now we repeat we repeat this all the time, and I know a lot of you hear this, but it, you know sometimes we get a new viewer, sometimes we get a new person over on on YouTube vods. So we want to educate everyone as to what's going on. So this is the Meta Madness style of draft here in the Banshee Cup. We're in round seven. It's the final round of Banshee Cup. Next weekend we start GSL bracket A. The following weekend I believe is GSL bracket B, and then we get into the playoffs over Cinco de Mayo weekend. I believe. I think I have to double check on that. Either way, we got a lot of great weekend uh, Banshee Cup games still coming at you. Uh, this is our third best of three of the day. First pick, Lucio for the set of Dayquaza. Uh, Meta Madness, by the way, means that heroes that are picked and played are unavailable, so uh, Lucio cannot be played in map number two or three in this best of three, but the bands at the top of the screen only pertain to the current map draft. Uh, there's a bounty system going on right now. We actually did see a bounty completed earlier today. But we'll talk about that bounty later. We have a, uh, the, the bounties are as follows. Butcher, Chogal, Nova, Asmodan, Gazlo, Murky, Probius, Valera, Kil Kilthazad, Convection, Kael'thas, Hunt, Illidan, Nidus, Sigara, Twin Blades, Varian, Monstrosity, Abathur, Longboat, Vikings. The duo of Stitches, Alexstrasza with the level one Globe Talents. We did see that early on Tomb of Spider Queen. I don't know why people haven't been doing that more. It, it, it feels like such an easy pickup. But either way, Lili and Chen, no specific talents, just drafting Lili and Chen. Triple healer team, no healer team, and the Juice Pirates with the Lieutenant Morales Medivac backdoor. Now, the difference is with the uh, Banshee Cup Season 2 is the bounty pool is now a shared pool. Oh, okay, thank you, Lion Lad. So it's, yeah, it's GSL next eight, GSL A next weekend, GSL B the following weekend, and then playoffs. Okay, thank you. Uh, cause I, th I, for some reason thought we were doing like A on Saturday, B on Sunday, and then we had like two weekends of playoffs, but anyways, uh, I think I've covered just about everything. Oh, the, the bounty pool. It's, uh, it's a shared pool. So as you do bounties, you get shares of the pool. So if four teams each complete one bounty, that's quarter of the pool to each team. Obviously it's way different than that. We've had a bunch of bounties completed this, uh, over this weekend, a bunch of, a couple bounties today actually. So it's been really, really fun to see. But as we have done all of our housekeeping, the last thing to mention is if you're watching here on Twitch, be sure to follow. If you want to be awesome like Lion Lad, you can tier two sub or gift five tier two subs. It's very much appreciated again, bud. Nova is going to be picked up by the side of Team Dayquaza. Okay, Madara was in chat yesterday and literally said that they had been practicing this for Battlefield of Eternity and he was bummed that they didn't get to run it. So this is, this isn't anything like crazy. We actually saw this composition yesterday from Team Dayquaza. We'll see if it works out. Now granted, this composition had a Greymane instead of a Hanzo with the Executioner Greymane level 16 because there's a lot of slowing value from Nova. But either way, really good draft from both sides. Uh, last but not least, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube channel. But thank you everyone for being here. I've rambled through the first draft. We've gotten through all of our housekeeping. Let's get into some fun action here on Battlefield. Map number one in our third best of three of the day. Twentieth and twenty-first is Group A, GSL A. Twenty-seventh and twenty-eighth is uh, B, and then the fourth and fifth is uh, the the finals. Okay, that makes sense. I just I don't know why I I had two weekends for the finals. 
Dude, that fourth and fifth are gonna be, those are gonna be some long days. Cause what is it? It's a double elimination bracket. One, two, three. Oh no, that's not bad. No, the playoff bracket's really small. Oh, because of the GSL bracket makes it small. Anyways, uh, all of that aside, there we go. Let me get into the right tab. Right side of the map, we're looking at Team Masquerade. For the second time today, we have got Mopsio on Muradin. Commander Rex will be playing your Vala. Valar is the Anduin. We've got Masquerade on the Sylvanas. And Yasu will be playing the Blaze. Thank you very much for the follow. Left side of the map, Team Dequaza. Madara playing your Nova. Elian will be your Garrosh. We've got Dark on Hanzo. Gamerboy Lucio and Dequaza. Team Dequaza playing Urel. Gamble is always shouted out by Ash Mantle. Thank you very much. As far as I understand, if Dequaza wins everything today, they can still finish first place. Is that correct? Uh, give me a second after this first engagement. I can look at the, the, the... I have the website open, so I can take a look at the standings here in a second. Yasu will go down. Madara! Excuse me, uh, Dequaza being thrown in onto Masquerade right there. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, there is going to be a push. All right, so let me take a look here really quickly. Let me take a look-see. Uh, Sylvanas goes down in top. I apologize. I was trying to F5 this. So let's see. Do -do -do -do. Team Dequaza have a 4-1 and one record. And if they win, it'll be a 5-1 and one record. If they take a 2-0... That'll be a 10 and 4 record. So, yes, they would be in first place because they would be plus 6 over Team Ultralisk, who's currently 10 and 6 map record with a plus 4. So, I do believe that, yes, if Team Dequaza take a 2 0 here, I do believe they have. Uh, there's no domination pointage, right? There's no domination. Like, if you get a 2 0, you get domination points. Like, you get the 3 points instead. Yeah, I think, I think if Team Dayquaza take a 2-0, I think they're going to be in first place based off of map record, because they would be 10 and 4. Yes. We still have awesome weekends to go. The 5th is our Liberation Day, but I'm having a hot stay. The 5th in the United States is Cinco de Mayo, which is a uh, made-up... It's, a, it's a, an American holiday to celebrate a Hispanic holiday. Cinco de Mayo is a very American, it's a very, like, it's a very American-Mexican holiday. I think there's, there is, there's a little bit more to it, but. I want to say that my dad, when he was working down in Mexico for an automotive company, like, he brought up Cinco de Mayo to them, and they were like, what? Well, we don't really celebrate that. Anyways, all right, let's focus in back on the game. Yasu is going to be popping Pyromania. We've got a Garrosh and Yurel. Bopping. Yasu's just like, just let me die. Oh no, he's trying to go for the great escape, but it's not going to work out. Three to one in kills. Gamble, by the way, is still open if you'd like to make a Twitch prediction on this Nova composition. We do have uh, Covert Ops level one. Uh, this, is different, this is a different build than we saw yesterday on this, on this Nova build, but after being still for two seconds, pinning shot slow is increased to 60% and the cost and it costs no mana. Uh, bonus is lost after losing stealth for one second. And we also see this uh, halo stability or hollow stability. Increase the cast range of hollow decoy by 100% and it's duration. Oh, that kerning on that percent is going to bother the hell out of me. The percent is, is a space away from the 100 These are the little things that I used to see in architecture, and they drive me nuts. Literally, like, there's a space between the zero and the percent, and if you look at, like, 55%, there's no space. Anyways, as we're talking about kerning on, on talent tips for a game that doesn't get active development, Sylvanas will go down. First Immortal Phase will be uh, won over by the members of Team Dequaza. And we have a very low Garrosh. He's going to be able to throw Muradin away. Dwarf Toss is back in, but Gamer Boy's got the Sonic wave to push him back. Yasu once again finds himself on the wrong side of the map. Yasu once again on the left-hand side of the map right there. Not too sure about that. Sabanis has rotated over the right-hand side. Hanzo going to start racing against this. All right, 
Very low Garrosh, but he's not too worried about that. 35 armor on him. Masquerade over the wall gets some decent sustained damage. Uh, very Garrosh is playing with fire right now. 30-something HP. And Hanzo gets the Immortal on the left-hand side, but I can't believe Garrosh did not go down right there. That is... That, acts, that that absolutely boggles my mind. Anti-armor shells, by the way, for the Nova at level 10, or level 7. So she now has a attack speed of 0.4 per second. It's actually really funny here. There you go. Attacks per second, 0.4. Right. Well, all that aside, let's take a look and see how the, well this immortal siege is in through top lane. Nova kind of zoning Mopsio from getting any sort of flank into the enemy team. Or ally team. Yorel up against no uh, Sylvanas in bottom lane. Looks like Dayquaza was putting some pressure onto Masquerade, but that is Masquerade. I saw the haunting wave activated in that mini-map moment. Fort front gate has been taken down. Murden Dwarf tosses into, into Garrosh here, who activates his Indomitable. Moderer with not a whole lot of mana will reset completely. And it looks like Dayquaza holds bottom lane. Actually starts pushing into Masquerade, who uses possession to push back the minion wave, stealing three away from this bottom lane wave. 11 stacks on Blaze level one. New habits. He's needs two, actually needs three more on that. He's just picked up his 12th. Nova sniping into the tower. Nova, Nova siege damage, OP, OP. Actually, let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers and see what the damage and stuff looks like. It looks like Garrosh is canceling the hearth. Dayquaza will be the one to hearth back. Okay. Nova Siege damage, 2.6 thousand. Wow. 2.6k, nice. Huge Siege damage. Indomitable activated once again, and this Garrosh is just unkillable. So many moments of near kills onto Garrosh, and Lucio with the amp it up, the Indomitable coming through in time. Yorel is going to clear things out in top lane. It looks like, yeah, the, the uh, Impaler was just pushing to range of the tower. Jet Propulsion from Blaze not connecting. Groundbreaker onto Muradin, but Chastise will slow down Garrosh from stepping in, and he already used this Indomitable. Haunting Wave activated by Masquerade to back away. Ten Town Tiers here. We've got the Triple Tap for Nova. Dragon's Arrow Hanzo. Decimate Garrosh. We'll see a high five Lucio, an ardent defender for Yorel. That's going to be Dragon's Arrow into triple tap, and Vala goes down. Valar is going to be displaced, displaced, and uh, Hanzo gets that last bit of damage. I just messed up the game. There we go. Consolation prize pushed down bottom lane, but now there's a flank coming out from Yorel and Garrosh. Savanas needs to be a little careful here. Murden hits his level 10. Masquerade's the target, but this is Murden's, or excuse me, uh, Garrosh, so very low. Lucio rolls down over here, looking at Masquerade. Ardent Defender activated, and Jarell gets a righteous hammer to the face of Masquerade. The objective phase is being ignored currently, as Dark and crew have already gotten 50% of this immortal. Gets a scatter out onto the enemy. One more groundbreaker needed for Garrosh to finish out his level 1 stackage. Mopsio, uh, you're really deep here, bud. Dwarf toss away. Triple tap down for 45 seconds. Immortal down here is being worked on currently. Yorel trying to slow down the enemy a little bit right there with it, some Righteous Hammers and such, but Gamer Boy and Madara starting to work on this Immortal in the north side. Sorry, it's just funny to me because Nova has an attack every point four s She can do uh, an attack every point four seconds. That's not right. I'm saying that backwards. Dragon's Arrow connecting onto mod, uh, Masquerade in the back line. Immortal will once again go over to Team Dayquaza. And we move into bottom lane. All right, let's see. Immortal's going to be dealing like 1,200 damage. Wow, 1,284 damage. It's like it's my job. Yasu avoids the stun from the Immortal. Garrosh with these decimates slowing down. That's going to be triple tap. The pain is going to be shared as some allies get in the way. Get down, Mr. Yasu. Garrosh steps in for that regeneration globe, lands the groundbreaker onto Murden, who dwarf tosses back at the enemies. No 13 talent here for the side of Team Dayquaza, as Yorel jumps in with the Avenging Wrath, uses the Divine Seed to immediately back away. The fort is going to be dropped down to 50%, and it's looking like top and bottom are fairly similar. Dayquaza goes in once again. Camp is being grabbed below, and they do have vision of this right now. 
Rail jumps on the point, Light Bomb from the Anduin. That's a lot of damage onto your Rail. No Ardent Defender was available for four to five seconds. Stormbolt into Garage. He pops a Decimate and will go down. A double kill picked up by Team Masquerade, who are starting to rally here in the mid to late game. I guess more mid game, but still. Wailing Arrow, Reign of Vengeance, Bunker, Light Bomb, and Avatar were picked up. We didn't really talk about those a couple levels ago. 30 stacks for the Vala currently, as well as new habits from Blaze being done. Garrosh level 1 is done. Hanzo level 1 is done as well. Uh, let's take a look at the Vala scaling if you are curious at home. Baseline is 233 plus an additional 180, so that's going to be somewhere in the ballpark of like 16,000 damage. Don't question the math, just accept it. Thirteens on both sides. We will see that double tap for Nova. Heavy casters on the Lucia, which is a big one. Savannah is going to have that remorseless auto attack upgrade. Gloom for the Vala collision course, as well as the Enchant Lion's boots and Bronzebeard rage. Garrosh with the blood craze. When hitting a hero, bloodthirst heals for an additional 15% of Garrosh's maximum health over three seconds. Ninja Assassin, by the way, hitting heroes with Stormbolt lowers the natural agility cooldown by 10 seconds. Additionally, heroes take down to reset natural agility, so it's a little bit more ability for our Hanzo player. Mopsio activates his avatar as he's going to take a triple tap to the butt, and Hanzo gets that last hit. Light Bomb from Anduin's pretty good. Dom uh, uh, denied by the Indomitable and the high fives of Lucio. But a Hanzo goes down to the Nexus forces. Yurel, Ardent Defender is available. She gets that activated in time. Meanwhile, Nova snuck around and Masquerade's gonna be the one picked off by Madara here. Actually, it's Dayquaza gets the kill. Captain of uh, team, well, team, team Captain taking down Team Captain. Triple kill goes over to the side of Team Dayquaza. There's a Fallen Shaman pushing top. I think Yurel's gonna hearth out. Yes, she will manage that. 11 to five in kills. And Team Dayquaza, they've lost their forts. They will get the first half of this immortal. Fort and top lane and bottom lane are fairly similar. Bottom lane is, a, I think, taking more damage here. So if this immortal is won by D Team Dayquaza, it will go to top lane based on the fact that it does have more HP. Yeah, just it, looking at the mini map, yeah. Vala working through this immortal quite quickly, but she's spending a lot of her resources on this immortal. Anduin immediately goes down. 12th kill, make it 13th kill over to the side of Team Dayquaza. Dragon's Arrow connecting onto two. Hanzo trying to chase down. Oh my god, Vala Sylvanas turn the pressure around. Dayquaza lunges in with the Avenging Wrath. Murden being thrown around, dwarf tossing around, Groundbreaker as well. But man, that Hanzo got annihilated. While we're kind of waiting here for, for things to happen, I want to check something here really quickly. 2,417 damage in 2.4 seconds. Wailing arrow from Sylvanas, push off from the Lucio, Muradin's righteous hammered into the wall, and Vala does go down. Man, that triple tap was not necessary. I feel like that triple tap was like, oh, I'm killing you. That triple tap was to send a message. But the members of Team Masquerade are here. It is 16 talents here. Advantage to the side of Team Dayquaza. If they get a couple kills here, that'd be massive, even if they lose the Immortal. Righteous Hammer onto Anduin. The Light Bomb is self-cast. Ardent Defender comes through in time. High Five is going to be there. Mopsio really low is going to go down on the north side of our screen. The Immortal still with 2,641 HP. Meanwhile, though, Hanzo. Meanwhile, though, Hanzo. They just need to zone for, two, for a little longer, and they will be able to achieve this. Immortal goes into top lane for the side. Oh, wait. Toss onto Yasu. Decent damage coming through. Leap of Faith. Hanzo ripped an arrow. Wait a second. The revisit of the 1v1. No, Commander Rex is not going to chase, and Dark is not going to. Is, is just going to disengage. Alrighty. The Immortal dealing probably 1,500 damage. Oh, my God. 1,548 damage. Well, look at that. Immortal moves down into melee mode as he loses his shielding. Larian starting to work through this top lane fort. Nova pushing into bottom lane. I think they're just going for double fort phase just to get the matching periodic catapult pressure. But as we know, Nova does not have the best wave clear. 
Um, she does damage, but her minion wave clear is lacking. Trying to save bottom lane for it, the Halo decoy, the hollow decoy, eats a couple tower shots. Triple tap thrown out by Madara here. I feel like it's more of a zoning tool than anything else. Urel jumps in for the flank potential. Righteous Hammer, Light Bomb. Big Dwarf Toss from Murd and Wailing Earth from Savannah to, say, to chase this further. Madara getting really low. The high fives from Lucio will not be enough. Gamer Boy trying to amp it up and will not be able to speed boost out of that one. It's like you know the game or something. It's like it's, like it's my job to cast this game and people on Reddit don't like me. As if that even matters. We just make fun content. That's all that matters, really, at the end of the day. Black Arrow's activated by Sylvanas. That's a Decimate Garrosh taking a Jet Propulsion to the face. The arrow goes wide from Hanzo. Big damage onto Dayquaza, who needs to try and get out of here with that Hand of Freedom movement speed. Will Hearth out completely, and the bottom lane keep goes down. Nicely done from the side of Team Masquerade. They're down in kills. Down in kills, but they are ahead in structures, and this map is still looking okay for Team Masquerade, regardless of the team fighting. Are you saying that people on Reddit like anything? Yes. Uh, they like making the same exact post every single time. This hero is OP. Will Microsoft save HOTS? It's been 12 years. Can I play HOTS? Or is it a good time to join? I, there's there's other there's other say there's like the same five reddit posts constantly you're getting trolled probably oh no i'm just i'm making a joke i i actually don't care righteous hammer into oh good bunker from blaze denies the triple tap wouldn't have gotten a kill but still break the triple tap hanzo dragon arrow once again going wide eu arrows never miss a uh, high five from Lucio's coming through the Wailing Arrow, Leap of Faith onto Mopsio. Some, I think, 270 HP, I think, was the lowest I saw Mopsio go, but the healing from Manduin's coming through in time. That'd be like saying people on 4chan are good-hearted folks. Oh, yeah, totally. I don't believe... I don't think Redditors believe anything they type. Oh, I think there's a lot of Redditors that believe very much what they type, but they're wrong. No, the, the story goes as this. Uh, like, a, a week or so ago... I was on Reddit and there was a th there was a thread. It was like hot YouTubers to watch, but every response was different Twitch streamers. So I was like, oh, I wonder if I get mentioned. And I scrolled, 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 and I kept scrolling. And I finally get I got mentioned by one person that I was like, oh yes, you know, Bahamut does casting and this and that. And there was one response immediately from a quote unquote master URL account, and it's oh Bahamut has silver game knowledge. Don't watch him. <laughs> Which I'm assuming that person probably came and saw me play HOTS one day, and my rank currently is in silver, so apparently that's 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 all my knowledge is that. Garrosh is gonna get chunked right here. We got a light bomb on to Muradin. He's going in onto a few of the backline members. Lucio able to get away, but now Muradin is gapped way too far from his team and will go down. Another kill goes over to the side of Team Dayquaza. What's up, Ember? Good to see you today, bud. I just find that I just to me that that stuff is just hilarious. It doesn't it doesn't make me feel sad or mad. I just kind of laugh at it. Victory Bottom lane catapults are what are the uh, what's the catapult scaling at right now? Seven oh eight into structures, half that standard, so around four hundred uh, no three hundred and fifty four. Is that right? Oh, we'll never know because the catapults cleared out. Rank shaming is dumb. Yeah, that's all right though. Go look at go look at League of Legends and Dota casters. Not all of them are grandmaster. Now there are some challenger and you know there's some there's some high rank Dota and League casters, but not all of them. Game knowledge and mechanical knowledge are two massively different things. I'd actually say game knowledge and mechanical skill. Ma uh, Dragon's Arrow will connect onto Vala. There's going to be the triple tap from Nova. Did not go for the upgrade at level 20 with the active uh, reload or the fast reload. 
Jet Propulsion, though, a lot of damage onto this Garrosh as he's not gonna go down. The keep will fall. We have the Apollo suit for, for Nova. Reduce the cooldown of Permanent Cloak by two seconds. And uh, that's gonna synergize with the level one. What is the actual cooldown on Cloak? I don't know. So it's a one second now. Look at how many Master Diamond players are just have zero map awareness skills or drafting skills. What? No way. No. That can't be it. That'd be crazy. Lucio with the mixing fire goes in. Wailing arrow thrown back by Masquerade. Doesn't get any sort of kill here. It was a hopeful attack. 90 second cooldown. 500 damage at the center. Oh, no, no. It's 500 damage. The, the deafening blast is what adds the damage to the center and stuff. But that's, yeah, that's that's the whole joke. I, was a, we had a, I, I read Reddit once in a while, and I'm just like, oh, eh. Alrighty, bottom lane being pushed in. Uh, one keep available for both teams in bottom lane. We have the Deadly Calm, by the way, for the Garrosh level 20. Acrobat for Vala. She's at 54 stacks. Let's take a look here really quickly. Uh, 324 damage plus 319. So we're upwards of 600 damage for the first Q that hits. And then there's, you know, subsequent bounces. She has that Acrobat, so that's four potential hits on a Q. You know, you Q, Vault, and reset, and... Anyways, Fortified Bunker, Censure, and Murden is actually going to go into Hardened Shield, which I was wrong last game. It's 75 armor. It's not spell armor, so it is physical and spell. I, for some reason, thought it was only spell. I, you know what I'm thinking of? I think I'm thinking of Impervious, because I think that is 75 spell armor. I think that's the one I was mixing it up with. But either way, could be the final Immortal. Winner of this Immortal goes to top lane, or winner of a big team fight goes through bottom and ends. I most, uh, I go to Reddit to remind myself that no matter how bad things are, at least I'm not a horrible internet troll. Oh. Huh? I mostly go on for memes and stuff. There's, there's some memes here and there that are good. Also, there's like, there's a, there's a subreddit for like movie details. That one is really fun. Dragon Arrow goes wide once again. <sighs> Madara working on this, uh, mortal here with the help of dark more twin flames poking here and there Nasu being thrown into the immortal area by our garage there's going to be a bunker activated immediately wailing air from savannas high fives from lucio and lucio's the one to go down first jet propulsion from blaze as this is a very low garage being taken down as well we will see dequaza falling unable to get the ardent defender actually did get ardent defender utilized and then died right after dark now being chased down by mopsio and this is going to be Hanzo falling. And as I said, oh no, you gotta go back. What are you doing? Madara will fall. And this is going to be Pentakill going over the side of Team Masquerade, who will take map number one in this third best of three of the day here in Banshee Cup round seven. Team Dayquaza needed this win to be able to hold first place or move into first place. That'll not be the case. Let's go ahead and see what happens here for map number two. GG well played. The Nova composition, unfortunately, did not come through. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and Murloc mains. We have got ourselves Infernal Shrines map number two in our third best of three of the day. Thanks for hanging out. My name is Bahamut, as we've got Dequaza, Team Dequaza on the left and Team uh, Masquerade on the right. Team Dequaza, I believe, if my, if my math is correct, which it usually is not, if Team 
Dayquaza take a 2-1 in the series. I do believe they jump into first place based on their map record, I believe. Uh, I may be incorrect with that, but uh, that, that's what it seems like. That's what it seems like based on the standings currently. Uh, we'll see how that all shapes up after the series is done. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll find out. Uh, Inferno Shrines for map number two. We had a Nova composition attempted in map number one. It unfortunately didn't work out. I mean, it was it was strong through most of the game. Like I was actually I was thinking that it was going to be a Nova win. I thought they'd pick up the bounty, but unfortunately it did not work out, and that will be one loss for the side of Team Dayquaza, who will start things out on Inferno Shrines with a Dahaka. Uh, what does Team Masquerade want to pick into here first? We we could be seeing. Oh, what do they want to lean into? Uh, wouldn't mind like a Diablo composition. That, that wouldn't be too bad for them. So they're going to look into... So they have the Leoric off the back and off the bat, and then they have the Diablo as well. So we have the potential for the Easy Bake Oven with that Entomb Lightning Breath. Could see the Apocalypse as well. But Entomb with, plus Lightning Breath is uh, fairly popular. I think Mopsy also likes to play a lot of Lightning Breath, if I remember correctly. Whenever we see him playing Diablo. Uh, Garrosh has already played in map number one, so he's not really an answer. Stitches and Falstead. This is a good Alex Straza map. This is a this is a good map where you can do the uh, the regeneration gloves for Alex Straza. Is this a concern for Team Masquerade? Do they want to ban out the Alex Straza to get rid of the bounty and the synergy? Falstead will be also grabbed here. Good sustained damage. Uh, it's been a lot of auto attack Falstead, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's the direction we head into. Q build Falstead has a lot of good poke potential around this map, but auto attack is a good way to chunk into the Diablo who's trying to get in people's faces. It's going to be a bright wing ban. Uh, Junkrat was already banned away, so nothing with that. Grant, so... Alex Straza has got that synergy with Stitches, as I mentioned, but Taronda and Malfurion are really, really good. And then if you go into a Malfurion, you, you, so you have the Root, of course, and then you have the Innervate, which is a great way to deal with, uh, is a great way to, to bolster, like, a Jaina or something like that. And Jaina would be a great follow-up to Gorge from Stitches. Now, there is an answer into this uh, Stitches-Gorge kidnap composition with a Medivh. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, maybe they don't even consider the, the Gorge. Maybe they actually just go into Putrid Bile and run at the enemy team. That is a option. I do think they are considering the Alexstrasza here, and they will go into it. So her Royal Thickness makes her way in. And it's going to be a Hyper Carry Falstead. They're going to pick up the Malthiel. And I actually kind of like this. Uh, the Malthiel getting good uh, percent damage onto Diablo, constantly threatening his health bar. This is going to be a Hyper Carry something. Valo has played in map one. Hanzo as well. Genji, maybe? Nope, Genji's banned away. Um, no, maybe like a Ghoul Dan, actually. They need a mage. They need wave clear. Like Ghoul Dan, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes actually a lot of sense for the composition. They could have gone Jaina for the Ring of Frost combo with the Diablo, but I, that leads me to believe that they're not going to be going into Apocalypse because they're picking up the Ghoul Dan instead of a Jaina. But either way, it's a really good draft from both sides. You know the deal. Let's jump into our casting screen, and we'll start up a prediction. Can the members of Team Dayquaza roll things back into a map number three, or will Team Masquerade take a simple, easy 2-0 in this third best of three of the day? We still have another best of three on the way after this one. Could be coming up next. Get your gambles in. Thank you, Ash Mantle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here we go. Up one map in this best of three series. As I mentioned, looking for the 2-0. There's the immediate globe towns for Alex Strauss and Stitches. But we've got on the right-hand side Team Masquerade up in this best of three series with a Commander Rex on Ghoul Dan. Yasu playing Medivh, Mopsio Diablo, Masquerade on Leoric, and Valar will be your Rhaegar. West side of the map, Team Dayquaza looking to take us to a map number three with her Royal Thickness, Alex Straza, played by Gamer Boy. Dark on the Malfield, Dayquaza to play Dahaka. Elian will be your Globe Stitches, and Madara rounds out the team with Falstead. What are we doing, Madara? 
Oh, you first. I see, I see, I see. Gul'dan is, uh, they're, they're trying to figure out, okay, who's taking what? Level one talents. Look from Stitches goes wide of the enemy. Pursuit of Flame level one for Gul'dan. We'll have uh, Madara going into frequent flyer auto attack build. Diablo comes in with a shadow charge. Dayquaza immediately burrows, lands the drag, cleanse from Rhaegar as the portal's set up by Medivh. They'll set portal mastery as Diablo's hooked in. Immediate force of will from Medivh as well. Mopsio being chunked by Dark here, and that was the thing I liked about this Malthiel in the four man. And looks like Falstad's actually going to rotate to top lane. Dayquaza taking a chunk of damage. Looks for the drag over the wall, but now Madara. Masquerade auto attack canceling. Moving back down into bottom lane. Diablo lands the shadow charge onto this uh, Stitches. He's dead. He, he gets a bite. He savors the flavor, and I can't believe it. Hook onto Mod. What? Call an ambulance, but not for Stitches. Diablo goes down. First blood over to the side of Team Dayquaza. And uh, that Twitch prediction still going for all of you at home. If you are interested in making a prediction, Dayquaz is going to brush stock in. That's a flight from Falstad. Portal set up. Valar, can you get through it? Absolutely. The hook will not connect from Stitches, but they do seal away the camp. And Malthiel, he broke off from a second from this camp for a second, but then jumped back on it because his team was did not need him. And double camp for the side of Team Dayquaz early on. Globes, globes, globes for Stitches, and Alex Straza, she's 5 out of 15 already. As our first punish will be Arcane in the top lane. Dahaka has got Enhanced Agility level 1, so he's going to meander his way up to top lane a little fast right there. We have the camp being contested in bottom lane right now. Gul'dan's already done with Pursuit of Flame level 1. Decent damage on a Mater and such. Alex Straza pops the Dragon Queen form, and Mopsio, damage over time, damage over time, protection, force of will, and the chain heal comes out. 8 HP, I think, was the lowest I saw it go. We've got Paralyzing Rage for Leork. That increases his slow from 40% to 60%. You see the Raven Familiar from Medivh as he's at 19 stacks currently. Masquerade able to Wraith walk out of this engagement. Dayquaza. Checking this camp over here. Diablo. Not sure if he saw Dayquaza rotate into this camp, but I do believe... He's going to be able to back away. Falstad in bottom lane picks up some soaks, soakage. As Stitches grabs the uh, the wave for top lane with Alexstrasza waiting for her for the uh, for the regeneration globe. Sorry, I wanted to check on Falstad really quickly if he's got flight up and available. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Madara! Some toxic fumes will knock out Madara, and that will be a kill over the side of Team Masquerade as the objective phase is, kinda, is up and available now. As I looked before, we do have flight available for the Falstad. Dahaka had to go down to bottom to clear things out. He does have brush stock if he wants to join into the allies. Gamer Boy and Dark playing the safe. Mopsio gets a shadow charge into the wall. Does have that sacrificial soul level four. Stunning enemy here's a shadow charge grants 10 souls and 20 armor. But Falstad flies in. Portal set up by Medivh. Dark getting a little low from Masquerade's pressure. A hook goes out from Stitches, only connecting onto a skeletal defender. Dahaka is going to brush stock into this as well. Looks for the drag. Can't land Commander Rex as Masquerade has to Wraith walk out, getting very low. Dark jumps in. Might have been a little too aggressive from Dark right there, trying to heal up. And that is just way too much gas from this Malthiel as Medivh goes through the portal. Currently at 23 stacks. Raven Familiar activating as well. Decent damage. Falstad's the target from Mopsio. As we do have a... I think there was a hook onto Mopsio, but it doesn't matter. Gul'dan able to get that kill. This is still a double kill over to the side of Team Masquerade. And they will be grabbing this first objective. Arcane Punisher. Dayquaza and friends are looking to still pressure into this. They land a drag point blank onto Gul'dan, but there's no follow-up damage to get a kill. Falstad's back, but he's already floating his way towards mid. It looks like to soak up for that level one more. 12 stacks for Alex Straza as the drag once again is not going to connect from Dayquaza. Alex Straza activates Dragon Queen form. 36 skeletal defenders. They can poke at this objective area with Commander Rex. With that uh, Gul'dan pursuit of flame level one, Gamer Boy has to back away. Falstad flies in, or at least he joins in. Mopsio getting low is able to get through the portal in time. The Punisher will go over to the side of Team Masquerade. And Gul'dan being hooked in. Commander Rex still not going down. Diablo lands enough, uh, lands a shadow charge, and that's full souls for him. Dark is trying to heal up here on this Malthiel, and I think he just dies to damage over time. This is all falling apart for Team Dayquaz, unfortunately. Yeah, 
It's not looking good for our blue squad in map number two in this third best of three of the day, but still is early. 10 talent tiers could be a shift. 16's a big moment as well. Let's go ahead and cycle through those other numbers and see what the damage healing experience looks like as 10 talent tiers getting close to the top of our screens, specifically for Team Masquerade. Single digit HP calculated. Zero HP calculated by the opposing team. No, no, no. I, yep. Can't argue against that one. Alrighty. Falstead is floating around waiting for the wave in top lane. Masquerade on uh, Leoric is going to rotate his way up there as well. Four to one in kills, and it's looking good for Team Masquerade here. Drag landed, decent damage. That might be a dead Leoric, and yes, they find the gank into Leoric, and that is gonna bolster the experience enough to join into level 10s. Uh, speaking of, we've got Entomb, Horrify, Leyline Seal, Ancestral Healing, Falstead flying down to mid. Medivh loses stacks! Gorge from Stitches. Gorge from Stitches. We do have the Lifebinder, Last Rites, uh, Gust, and Isolation. Falstead may be looking for the Gust Angle here. Commander X will be pushed down. Falstead Barrel rolls in. A lot of damage. Last Rites, and that is going to be Gul'dan falling. And a Last Rite stack picked up by our uh, Malfiel. Now, I do want to point out, 6 minutes 43 seconds in, Alex Straza finishes level 1. Why is this important? Because now Alex Straza will spawn a Regeneration Globe every single time she puts down the Abundance. So it's going to be a free globe for Stitches. And keep in mind, you're also doing double soak duties. So we should see Stitches pick up a rapid amount of globes. He's already at 18 right now and two globes. He'll have 10% uh, increased movement speed. So he'll move at 110% when unmounted. And for those of you that don't know, mount speed is 130% or 30% augment. So the math is at 100 regeneration globes, at 100 globes for Stitches... It'll be prudent. It'll be a unwise idea to mount up because it would actually take longer for him since he has to do the mount animation. Because at 100, he'd have 130% speed. Also keep in mind, globes are adding in health. Stitches also has uh, another 500 bonus HP from this. And we didn't really talk about this. He did go into Gambit level seven. He went second helping. If Stitches is at max HP, after using Devourer, he gains a shield equal to 15% of his maximum health for 10 seconds. Every death reduces the shield by 3%. So there's five stacks, as you can see over here. Top lane camp is grabbed over on the right side. Dayquaza doing the same thing on the left. Second Punisher frozen in the mid lane. Woo-wee! Oh, Madara! Uh... That's awkward. He did, I, I was like, oh, Madara, brilliant. Auto attack the totem because you'll get some healing. No, he didn't go into hammer gains level four. He went into updraft. So no heals from that. Leyline seal from Adiv, but Diablo's already on the far side of the keep front gate. Does he have a, he has nothing to shadow charge to. There's just no camp below as well. Portal from Adiv is going to be set up. There's going to be an ancestor healing burned as well as I mentioned that Leyline seal. False stats back up. The top lane fallen shaman pushed in. We have our second objective phase. That's gonna be a hook into the entomb from Leoric. Diablo did go apocalypse here, waiting to see if Mopsio activates it. He's gonna get a protection from Mediv, but it's gonna be a little too early. Last rights, maybe actually last rights is timed out perfectly there. That's Diablo Souls consumed. 10 seconds off of this heroic, so it's gonna be a 60 second cooldown currently. From those two stacks on last right. Stitches, 27 regeneration globes, and he's gonna pick up a few more here around this objective area. Two more from the objective spawn, and probably one from Alex Straza for free. So we should be seeing 30%, which is going to be 50. Oh no, no. Uh, he needs 40 for the 15. Yeah, because it's every 20. Dahaka looked for the drag after the burrow. Couldn't find it. Lurker Strain bopping Rhaegar a little too far away. Mediv, by the way, did lose stacks earlier. He's only on four currently. Five to five in kills, and Team Dayquaza looking a lot healthier here in map number two. They had a couple wobbles at the start, but those wobbles seem to just be completely over with as the Punisher is going to be prioritizing Mopsio. The Leyline Seal is the answer to create some space for Mopsio to back away. Uh, Hook goes fishing for the enemy with the extended Hook with that 40% range, but it's not going to find anyone but the Keep Front Gate. Red Team has destroyed Lies? I never lie. 
Dahak is able to zoom his way out of this. He's got five, he's got six stacks on enhanced agility, so he moves at 132% movement speed. As you get 2% per stack, and at the five mark, you're at the 130. And when he's maxed out, he has 140% movement speed, so he's 10% faster than Mount, but only for five seconds after tapping a bush. Or a grate, if you will. Diablo initiates with a Shadow Charge here. There's going to be a Brush Dock in from Dahaka on the right-hand side. A hook from Stitches will connect. Commander Rex is looking to try and back away. Dahaka burrows, and he avoids the uh, avoids the Apocalypse. Falstead able to barrel roll away. The last rights is denied by a Force of Will from Medivh. Dark getting a little bit low. Diablo goes in, and Gul'dan throws one fell flame. That's a hook onto Commander Rex, who's going to get slammed, jammed, and will go down. Diablo finishes out his souls by... Shadow charging into the wall. It still is a two-for-one favor inside of Team Masquerades. They all portal in onto Dayquaza, who lands the drag immediately. But Dayquaza is dead, Quaza. Yeah! A shining moment, or a few moments of, of uh, reprieve, or what looked good for the side of Team Dayquaza, is snuffed out by Team Masquerade as they get a triple kill. They take down the bottom fourth. They have 16 talents here advantage. And bottom lane Mortar Punishers looking good for Team Masquerade as our Leork player, Masquerade, moves into mid lane for Soak. Stitches picking up his 40th globe, as I mentioned. 15% movement speed. Went on Mountain. He's got 1,025 extra HP, so he's got 6,685 HP in total. And he has not fallen, so he's still got full Savor the Flavor level 4. Or second helping. And I said level 4, level 7. Madara, 28 stacks currently. Rampant Hellfire was picked up by Gul'dan. He didn't actually go into Fell Armor at level 13. Went in for the Health Stone. Activate to heal for 25% of Gul'dan's maximum health. Every uh, 45 seconds, or it's got a 45 second cooldown. Mithril Maester Leoric. As well as that Spectral Leech. Falstad still pushing out bottom lane. 16's on both sides. We've got that Pulverize, which is a big one for Stitches. Medivh just floating above. Medivh, by the way, only 12 stacks currently. He's only died once, and he lost a 20 or so st chunks of stacks. Dark and Dayquaz in top lane are trying to brawl into this. We have a Ancestor Healing Force out into Commander Rexo, as well as... Wait, hold on. That's a good hook onto Diablo. Drag to follow up. Souls may be expended. And yes, they will. There's a Gorge onto, onto Rhaegar here inside the Entomb. Gus from Falsa to try and push back the enemy. Here's a Leyline Seal from Medivh. He did go into Temporal Flux level 16, right? Yeah. Big cooldown reduction on that Leyline Seal from auto attacks. It's like 3% from auto attacks and 9% when you hit an enemy hero with Arcane Rift. That is bleh. 9% of 80 seconds. <coughs> Someone in chat can do that, Matt. It's ridiculous, is what I'll say. Mopsio and Yasu on the point right now. Masquerade pushing up the wave. Dahaka will brush stock in, looking for Yasu. Portal away, Madara has to barrel roll. Apocalypse already activated. There's a good drag and damage onto Masquerade, who's getting really low. Force of Will will connect onto Masquerade. If there's a last rights for Malfeel, he could really get some decent damage onto Mopsio or Masquerade, but Malfeel's unable to... Oh, the hook onto Yasu, but the portal set up and Yasu will be fine. Drag onto Masquerade, who's just so very low. Gets another Force of Will. Last Rites will time out. And that's a stack for our Malfeel. Third stack for him. A Life Binder connects just in time, but Dark will still go down. Gus from Falstad is a little late. 30 to 34 in Skeletal Defenders, and the portal in from Medivh setting up, trying to go in. Stitch is a little low. Diablo goes in with a Shadow Charge. Gorge onto the Rhaegar. The Leyline seals the answer into that one. Now Rhaegar trying to get away. Gets a Force of Will from Medivh. Diablo smashes Alex Straws into the wall. She'll be dead for the next 50 seconds. Drag onto Diablo. Can they get a counter kill onto him? A portal is set up. They want to take down Stitches, and they will be able to do so. Mopsio is still going to fall. He had souls? Wow, he got souls back during all of that, which makes sense. You get 10 from kills. There was 30 from kills. He landed a lot of shadow charges. And either way, I mean, three for one as Leoric will go down. He'll respawn in the battleground. Top lane is a decent wave, and... 
Punisher pushing heavily in bottom. Good morning, Cab. Good to see you, bud. How was your uh, Gloomhaven stream last night? Well, well, well. Bottom lane fo keep goes down. And does Team Masquerade end? Not yet. That timers are relatively low and they'll just back away. Stitches about to hit 60 globes. He'll have 20% movement speed unmounted in those three globes. Of course, he's dead for the next two seconds. By the way, if uh, if you've been watching the Fallout show, this, I, this isn't really a spoiler. I guess it kind of is with the cameo, but either way. Matt Berry has a cameo in Fallout, the TV show. And it's amazing one, but they actually use practical effects for his cameo. It, it it's wild. It's like I what I thought it was CGI. It's not. It's all practical effects, which which makes me which makes me laugh because there was a there was like a Marvel or a DC director recently that was like I don't want to use practical effects because it makes it, it because it looks bad and it looks like cosplay. Meanwhile, Fallout Fallout TV show did practical effects for something. And it is amazing. It blew me away when I found out. Madara getting bullied in bottom lane will go down. Masquerade gets a force of will just in time. No. Leyline seal. Horrify. It's all falling apart on the side of Team Dequaza with this Alex Straza composition. I guess it's this uh, kidnap composition. Hook on. Okay, they they abduct Rhaegar. Hungry, hungry stitches, really? That was greedy right there. Mopsio a bit of Hellgate away. Dark over here on the right, chasing out some enemies. A drag immediately on to Mopsio. Should lose souls? Should lose souls? God dang, this force of will is so annoying! Mopsio, how are you alive? Okay, he's dead. Malthiel buys back in with his level 20. He cannot die for the next three minutes, so he cannot die until about 21 minutes in-game time. If Malthiel dies before that, then he'll have an 80-second death timer. Hmm. Well then. Team Dayquaza backs kind of against the wall here. Mid lane Punisher gonna be Arcane. 20 seconds to go on that. Impaler can't being grabbed for bottom. Looks like Leark will clear out a bit of top lane. 66 stacks for Stitches. What is his uh, health at? 8,538. 20% movement speed. He did die once. So there's that 3% uh, off the Devourer right there. Or off the uh, the Gambit, the second helping. Ha! Uh, it says loan. Second helping loan. Ha <laughs> ha! Sorry. When, when Gambit Talons came out, I called them Mortgage Talons because there was, there was, the loan term was used a lot heavier. That's a hook onto Masquerade. A Leyline Seal though with the Medivh Cheats is going to create some space. The Wind Tunnel from the False Dead activated from the low side of this as the Alex Straws the Lifebinder will connect onto our False Dead. Now we do have a double gorge onto Rex Rhaegar and the Ghoul Dan. Valar is trying to chase onto Madara. We have a split fight right now. Masquerade very low. Dark is going to try and take down Masquerade, but it doesn't work out. Leork gets that kill. Rhaegar gets that with like 60, 30, 38 HP. I think was the lowest I saw it go. Medivh Yasu coming out on top of that one. Diablo will go down. He doesn't have souls to uh, respawn here. As I mentioned, that Malthiel, his death timer is 64 seconds because of that no one can stop death dying before the 21 minute mark. Meanwhile, bottom. Meanwhile, top. Meanwhile, in mid. Diablo is... Okay, so Diablo... Uh, Diablo Malthiel are traded here. Madara are getting a little bit low. Big Entomb from Leoric with the Buried Alive, and that is Gul'dan finding the last little bit of damage with that rampant Hellfire. Gonna drain a little bit of health off of this Stitches, who's just gonna try and slam back onto the enemy. Camps have, uh, the top lane camp did push in and took down the keep. Yasu, oh, uh, what did I do, what did I do, what did I break? Sorry, I meant, to, I meant to show Yasu at 38 stacks on that, uh, level one. But meanwhile, in bottom lane, 
Catapults and Impalers are currently ending the game. Dang near ending the game. Holy crap, Catapults are fixated here. I think you just literally, yeah, you just portal up and you go core. I mean, there's 16% left on the core. Hungry Hungry Stitches. Leyline Seal del deny delays things out. Ancestor Healing still eight seconds to go on that one. Core at 15%. Big, massive Entomb from Leoric. Alex draws a Life Binder will be activated. Last Rites gets a kill, I think. I'm not even sure right there. It did. Yeah. GG, well played. Team Masquerade shut down Team Dayquaza here in map number two and take a 2-0. Team Masquerade did win Infernal Shrines and they uh, take a 2-0.